In Chapter 4, Genetic Inheritance, we learn about how a person inherit certain traits from their parents. In this chapter, we will look at the flow of genetics in a population. How many individuals in the population are homozygous dominant and recessive, and how many are heterozygous individuals. So, why do we learn about population genetics? When we look at the growth of a population, we want to study whether an evolutionary process occurs in the population or not. And we can take into consideration about the process of evolution when there are changes in the allele frequencies from one generation to the next generation. So, make sure you are ready with your notes, calculator, and of course, your problem-solving skills. So, how can we get the allele frequencies in a population? Imagine we have a small population of rabbit here, with their genotype for the color of their fur. We know that one individual with homozygous dominant genotype will have two dominant alleles. One individual with homozygous recessive genotype will have two recessive alleles and heterozygous individual will have one dominant allele and one recessive allele. In this rabbit population, we have one homozygous dominant rabbit, thus we have two dominant allele from one homozygous dominant. Five rabbits that are homozygous recessive, thus we have 10 recessive alleles here. And finally, we have four heterozygous rabbit, so we have four dominant alleles and four recessive alleles from this group. So, what are the total of dominant allele and recessive allele in this rabbit population? So, from the calculation, in this rabbit population, we have a total of 6 dominant alleles and 14 recessive alleles. To get the allele frequency, we need to divide the number of a particular allele with the total number of all allele. For the dominant allele, we will have 6 divided with 20 because 20 is the total number of alleles in the population and we get the frequency of dominant allele 0 0.3. The same for recessive allele, 14 divided with 20 to get 0 0.7 for the frequency of recessive allele. And you must understand that the allele frequency will always equal to 1. Now let's look at a much bigger population where we have here 80 plants where we look at the gene for the tallness of the plants. So we know that one plant will have two allele. So if in the, in the population we have 80 plants, so we will have a total of 160 alleles in the population for the certain trait. So, if we have 40 plants that are homozygous dominant, so we will have 80 dominant alleles from this group, 10 homozygous recessive, so we will have 20 recessive alleles, and 30 heterozygous, so we will have 30 dominant alleles and 30 recessive alleles from this group. So to get the frequency for each alleles, we use the same formula where we total up the dominant alleles and divide it with the total alleles. So we have 110 divided with 160 alleles and we get the frequency for dominant allele 0 0.688. 
And the same for the recessive allele, where we take the total of recessive allele, that is 50, divided with 160, and we get the frequency for the recessive alleles as 0 0.313. So now we have a much bigger population, where we have 1,000 cows. In the 1,000 cows, we have 500 cows that are homozygous dominant, 1,000 cows that are heterozygous, and 500 cows that are heterozygous recessive for the color of their skin. So, why don't you try to calculate the dominant allele frequency and also the recessive allele frequency? You can find the answer in the description box below. And always remember that dominant allele plus with recessive allele will always equal to 1. Other than the gene pool method to get the frequency of alleles that we learned just now, we can also use hardy wemberg equation to get the allele frequencies. Hardy and Weinberg has come up with these two equations to get the frequency of alleles and genotype frequency. So, if we are able to use this frequency, it will be much easier to get the frequencies of the alleles. But there are certain rules that we need to follow to be able to use hardy weinberg equation. We need to ensure that the population follows all of these assumptions to be able to use the hardy weinberg equation. But it is quite impossible for the population to follow all of these assumptions. So, if the population do not follow the hardy weinberg equilibrium, we cannot use the hardy weinberg equations. So, what can we do now? We will go back to the method of the gene pool to get the allele frequency, the gene pool method that we learned just now in this earlier in this video.